Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to online classes. Well, we have had gone through our extensive online PA1 examination, right? And I hope you have enjoyed this new experience thoroughly. Well, it was never this much easy without your help. And I do believe you have uh, enjoyed this uh, examination thoroughly. So, dear students, uh, now uh, today uh, we are going to start a new chapter that you can see on your you know, screen. It is From Journey to the Center of the Earth. Well, uh, this chapter is uh, taken from uh, New Pathways, Revised New Pathways course book, Standard 8. And this chapter has been taken from Unit 4, Unlikely Destinations. And the section is Section 2, right? Well, in this Unlikely Destination, we are going to uh, read more about uh, those destinations which are, are unlikely. You know, you never have had been there or you have never thought to be there also. These are the destinations, uh, you know, which will uh, give you some uh, more understanding towards the earth, how uh, it looks like and what are the things uh, in the surroundings over there. Well, uh, this is uh, an expert also, which has been taken from the noble journey to the earth journey to the center of the earth and uh, actually this book was actually written by a german professor of geology and mineralogy and the name of uh, that professor was Le leidenbrock and uh, his nephew was also associated with uh, mr leiden uh, brock his name was axel leidenbrock Actually, uh, these two uh, both believed that there are volcanic tubes going towards the center of the earth. And I believe you all have uh, read it in the geography uh, book also. So, um, in this book, uh, there are certain characters, uh, you know, um, and actually they have read uh, this uh, book. Uh, re they have read this all thing in a book that was written from Arne Sakonem. Arne Sakonem. Uh, he was a scholar from the 16th century and uh, he has traveled he had tra he has traveled you know like to the center of the earth and while traveling he has also recorded you know uh, the instructions uh, to reach that center of the earth. Well a dear student in this uh, as I have uh, discussed uh, just before now that there are certain characters who has helped so those uh, characters names are Hans and the Icelandic guide now Icelandic guide is a person who has more idea about Iceland he was there to guide so they while uh, you know roaming and while uh, completing the journey came across numerous adventurous and uh, you know extinct animals even natural perils before returning to the surface again so these are the things which they have found which they you know like saw in the journey well here the narrator says in first para that it was quite weary for them when they uh, like uh, they were traveling and when they saw that they have been tramped over uh, a bed of bones it was quite amazing uh, weary for them though that time was weary for them so that's why it is written weary hour right and uh, after you know feeling uh, these all things uh, when they advanced uh, regardless of everything down or uh, drawn by an ardent uh, curiosity it means like when they moved when they moved, they walked uh, ahead and they were not thinking, they were not getting scared of anything. And But 
the ardent curiosity ardent means like enthusiastic curiosity it means like when you wanted to know something badly you do not care about the certain things which is happening around or which is going on uh, you know just uh, beside you or around you they are sharing all the things like uh, how the other marvels did this uh, with great uh, content uh, sorry cover content and then they were also thinking about uh, it was uh, a wondrous treasure for the scientific men if uh, you know they would travel here so the narrator is saying his eyes was also quite prepared for this all a number of surprises and whatever the imaginations uh, he have lived up to expectations of something new and wonderful it was all coming to the reality hold on just guys one second well dear student in second and third para as you can see the narrator is talking about discussing more about the borders of great uh, central ocean which has you know like uh, as by uh, the time was passing it has disappeared behind the hills and uh, that were scattered over the ground occupied by the plains of bones so now you know the narrator is talking about the imprudent and enthusiastic professor who has written his experiences of traveling journey to the center of the earth actually he was not caring of uh, you know a lot about himself that whether he will lost there whether uh, something will you know like uh, uh, disturb and he was just keep on walking uh, uh, that was in a hurried ba manner hurried way and the you know people who were accompanying in that journey were also advancing silently and all of uh, sudden they you know actually uh, bathed in the babes of electric fluid it means here that they have reached to the place somewhere where the light was you know coming on them directly in third para it says by the reason of phenomena which i cannot explain it was unexplainable and he was thanking uh, actually uh, to the extreme diffusion which was now complete actually uh, that time the light illuminated equally the sides of every hills and rocks and that's why the light was over their head also they were now standing in the light earlier when they were traveling it was whole dark or somewhere light and dark it was the mixture of that now he says uh, its seat its seat uh, appeared to be nowhere in no determine determined force and produced no shadow whatsoever so actually that place where they were standing now standing it was completely illuminated it was glowing in the light now the narrator says the appearance presented was that of the tropical country at midday in summer in the midst of equatorial regions and under the vertical rays of the sun he is just explaining about the current situation where they were standing all signs of vapors vapor has had disappeared the rocks the distant mountains some confused masses of far off forests assumed a weird and mysterious aspect under this equal distribution of the luminous fluid fluid so there were uh, you know no sign of found there uh, like any water was there and even uh, he was looking they were looking towards all the rocks and distant mountain mountains everything everything was like uh, getting light lighted and this incident sounds like as a weird and mysterious aspect for them now we resemble to a certain extent extent the mysterious 
personas in one of the Hoffman's fantastic tales, The Man Who Lost His Shadow. So this above incident, what they were, uh, you know, feeling, what they were experiencing, now they are comparing it. They are just resembling it with a fairy tale that was written by Hopsman Fantastic Tale. That is written in Hopsman Fantastic Tale, where they were, the man was the man who has lost his shadow. In the same uh, situation, in the same condition they were. So now the narrator says, after we have we had walked about a mile farther, we came to the edge of a vast forest, not, however, one of the vast mushroom forests we had discovered near Port Gretchen. It was the glorious and wild vegetation of the territory period. In all its sub superb magnificence, now he in this uh, in this uh, para the narrator is like uh, talking about the journey of the writer. He says the professor actually uh, uh, says in his uh, book that when they walked and uh, a mile farther from the that place where they were standing, they found a vast forest. And then after they are comparing with a, a vast mushroom forest where everything was like you know quite uh, amazing he's talking about the wild vegetation uh, he's again comparing one mushroom forest with this forest and he's talking about uh, the you know plants and trees found there it was in a superb magnificent well in their journey they saw many uh, trees like huge palms and uh, some species which were unknown they saw pines yew cypress and confires or con bearing trees the whole bound together by an inextricable manner now what is called inextricable manner that is i uh, means uh, you can call it cannot be separated so whole trees were you know like uh, bind bounded together and it was looking so complicated uh, even they saw complicated mass of creeping plants which were you know uh, surrounding the whole trees by them then after they saw a beautiful carpet of mosses and ferns grew beneath the trees pleasant brooks brooks means small river which were murmuring uh, that means the sound of the water uh, was splashing uh, beneath um Ambergris boughs. Um, a boughs means like um, the main branch of the trees, and ambergris means uh, you can call giving shade. So when uh, the main branch of tree will, uh, uh, you know, be up above the ambergris uh, like uh, brook, it will always provide shade to them, and it were all little worthy of this name. Whatever the scene it was, so it was it was all little worthy of this name. Now upon their borders grew small trees like shrubs, such as such as are seen in the hot countries on our own inhabited globe. So the narrator was basically comparing the things. Now in next para, the one thing what they uh, you know like uh, uh, saw was like the lacking of the color. There were there were lacking of color either it is in plants or shrubs or trees they all were deprived deprived means uh, they have never re received this uh, color the trees never received the color the plants never received the colors the leaves never received the color of the vivifying warmth of the sun vivifying is like uh, you can say uh, you know something that makes a more lively or interesting so when the trees are colorless, when the leaves are colorless and shrubs are colorless, it will be called deprived of the vivifying warmth of the sun. Why? Because we all know that the sun takes the light of, uh, you know, um, sorry, the leaves takes the light of the sun and then after they prepare food and they continues uh, to glow and shine uh, all, uh, year, all around the year, right? Now, they have seen you know like the leaves were wholly devoid of green and the flowers so numerous during the tertiary period dear students now above i have uh, 
pronounce that tertiary that is uh, do the correction in that that is called tertiary t e r t i a r y and tertiary means uh, like you can say third in order or level so i'll give you one example of tertiary like if anyone is scoring third rank in the class he'll be known as the third uh, tertiary uh, rank holder okay so uh, these all trees and these all shrubs and plants were of tertiary period which gave birth and the birth was without color and without perfume like this all trees and shrubs and whatever their uh, uh, you know confi uh, confi trees were their confi trees and conbearing trees were without color and without perfume there was no such exposure you know so they can um, receive it from the atmosphere now in next para he says the narrator says my uncle ventured beneath the gigantic groves i followed him though not without a certain amount of fear since nature had shown herself capable of producing such spent stupendous vegetable supplies why might why might we not meet with uh, mammals just a large just as large and therefore dangerous so he is telling about the you know venture means to visit so they went uh beneath the gigantic groves uh, which was of uh, which was formed by the rocks and mountains and uh, they they actually uh, followed the uncle and actually they lived they went there without a fear because when you are supposed to visit those places a uh, different type of a fear occurs in the mind but still they were quite curious to know more things about that Uh, about nature and about the other uh, stupendous thing a uh, stupendous here means uh, very large and impressive now the next para i partic particularly remarked in the clearing left by trees that had fallen and had been partially consumed by time many leguminous shrubs such as maple and other eatable trees deer to ruminating animals then there appeared confounded together and intermixed the trees of such varied lands specimens specimens of the vegetation of every part of the globe there was the oak near the palm tree the australian eucalyptus a leaning against the tall norwegian pine the polar of the north north so first of all let me tell you the uh, word meaning of uh, these words uh, like uh, ruminating ruminating means thinking uh, now you can say confounded confounded means confused stupendous i told you very large and impressive so these all things when they were uh, remarking when they were you know like uh, Uh, moving ahead marching ahead they have been uh, gone through these all things the trees and uh, you know uh, like uh, animals uh, which are called ruminating animals like uh, you can say about uh, whom which you can think after that they, uh, they saw you know like confounded uh, actually they found him themselves confounded together and uh, intermixed what are these things Uh, why you know such a varied lands are here uh, available? Why the specimens of vegetations are quite different, right? Of every part of the globe. So these were the things uh, narrated in this para. Now moving towards next para. Mixing its branch with those of the New Zealand quarries, it was enough to drive the most igneous classifier of the upper regions. but of his mind and to upset all his received ideas about botany so uh, actually when they found themselves confused uh, when they saw uh, these all uh, trees of mixing it branches uh, with uh, you know the tree which are found in new zealand that is called uh, kauris now kauris means uh, you can say trees found in new zealand are called kauris it was quite a mixture of that and this the thought like it was enough to drive them the most igneous classifier uh, of the uh, upper regions 
out of his mind because they never thought of these all things so they are now driving the that thought of their mind and they felt upset uh, all uh, what they have received uh, the ideas when they were learning about botany in their school or classes so dear student uh, this chapter is quite long i'll be discussing the uh, next part of this chapter in next video till then bye take care and have a nice day thank you